Welcome back to episode three of... Today we're making a basket so easy, even a baby could do it. Well, maybe not a baby, but this is a continuation of episode two. We're gonna be going from start to finish. You're not gonna miss out on any of the steps. Let's get to it. Today, we're gonna to be making cattail basket using the twining technique. For flexible herbaceous material, for getting a really strong basket or pouch or whatever you're trying to make, a twining technique is going to give you a lot more strength. Okay, so we're gonna start this basket just like our other one with a plated base. And we are going to have our cattail already dried and soaked and ready for weaving. And we're gonna go ahead and prepare 12 pieces that are roughly 17 to 20 inches long. And I already told you that we need our pieces to be around 17 to 20 inches long, but we're just gonna double check it on a mason jar. Uh, it's not gonna be the same size as a mason jar, but a mason jar is gonna be able to fit in it. And I didn't wanna make anything that much bigger. So if you watched episode two, this technique that I'm doing right here should be somewhat of old hat for you. What we have is 12 pieces total, and we're gonna have six going vertically and six going horizontally, interlacing in an over under, over under, over under type of pattern. This is probably the most common mistake you might run into while doing this, where you just get uh, two overs or two unders, and it's easy enough to correct. Just go ahead and remove the pieces and uh, put an under as an over or an over as under, and then you're back in the weaving game. And just as a reminder, you don't need to worry so much about having everything super tight as you're working with this first part. Once you get everything in place, then you can go ahead and just cinch everything up and get it as tight as possible. One important thing here is as you're working, just try to have everything as centered as possible. It's really gonna help you out. And once you have all the spokes in place, this is uh, really important to bring a baby around to double check your work. And once the baby has approved it, you're good to go. After we have plated the base, we are going to start our twining. And for this first few layers of twining, it's really nice to get some really narrow strips uh, to make sure it's like super tight to really lock in those uh, plates. And we can do that by just splitting our cattail leaves in half, just like so. Once we have our two strips together, we can start to begin our twining. We're going to take one of our strips and fold it in half, and we're going to pick um, one of the spokes to work with. We're not going to pick a corner spoke. It's going to be good to start in the middle, just like this. And 
And twining, once you get the hang of it, is a very simple technique. And you'll notice we have a piece that's above and a piece that's below a spoke. The piece that is above a spoke always goes under the spoke that is adjacent to it. The one that is currently under the spoke is going to lay on top of the one that's next to it. So don't worry, I'm going to show you this many times and so you're going to have lots of opportunities to follow along. And again, it's just taking the piece that is over and tucking it under the one that's next to it. And the one that was currently under the piece that you started with is going to lay on top of the piece that is adjacent to it. And when we get to a corner, it's the same thing. The piece that is currently over top of the one you're working with, it's going to go underneath that corner. And the one that is under is going to go over top of that corner piece. And you might hear a little baby putting in her two cents here. And so if you hear some cooing or things, something like that, that's, that's what that is. So sit back and relax. I'm just going to do some twining here and you can observe or follow along and hopefully you're going to get a good gist of what we're doing. Okay, so eventually you're going to need to add some more cattail leaves to continue twining. And it's actually a pretty simple process. All we need to do is take our other piece of cattail that we have prepared and fold it in half. And although I'm not doing it in this video clip, 
Um, you want to wrap around right where those last uh, weavers were ending. So right here, I'm making it harder on myself and lassoing the spoke that is just to the left of where I'm ending. And you know, that's fine, I can make it work, but to make it just super easy, just lasso or wrap around right where the that ending spoke is. And then so it's, it's very clear which part is the bottom part, and which part is the top part. And we're just going to keep the tops together and the bottoms together and then just continue twining as we have before. And that's going to lock in your new weaver and you can just continue twining forevermore. You know, once we have gotten three or four rounds twined around the base, we want to go ahead and, and try to tighten up our uh, wraps as best as possible. And then we're going to go around and just try to adjust our spokes. We really want to try and get it to be kind of radial. Uh, in this case, at least, we're trying to go for a, like a roundish kind of basket. And, and so we'll just go around and we'll kind of push and pull on the spokes just to kind of spread them out. And it's also going to make it a lot easier to twine. And up until now, we've been using relatively small width cattail leaves. And to help your basket bulk up quicker or just get more meat on it, we're going to start using some wider cattail leaves. Hey, this would be a good time to uh, spritz down your basket with some water to keep it supple. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this video and it seems to be helpful for you. We're going to be making a lot more basket videos. Okay, so this is the easier way to splice your twining here. You see how I just lassoed right where that last twining was ending. And so it's easy to tell which is the top part, and which is the bottom part. And I keep them together and I can continue twining as I have before. And it will incorporate both pieces and bam, you've spliced together two pieces and can twine to your heart's content. Once you get in a rhythm here, you can see it could be easy to just, after you pull those weavers under, just to tuck them up and over and out of the way so that you can bring that other weaver over top of it.
once we've gotten quite a few rounds twined around the base, we can actually start to lift up on the sides and start forming the sides of their basket. You know, if we just left it all flat, we would essentially be just twining like a placemat. And so the rounding in sides comes from pushing up and manipulating the base, um, manipulating those spokes to keep upright. And that's how we actually get the sides of a basket. We can't just leave it flat. You know, it can seem a little bit challenging at first when we start twining the sides. That's because up until now we've been twining on a flat surface and to our mind's eye, it just kind of feels different when we're working on the sides, but it's the same technique. You know, the one that the, the weaver that is currently underneath of the spoke we're working with goes over top of the next one. And the one that was over on the current spoke we're working with goes underneath the next one. It's the same technique. And you know, it's, it's almost like a magical thing. The sides just kind of start appearing for you. And once you really start to get some height on those sides, you can really get a nice rhythm going and it becomes actually pretty easy. And you can kind of just zone out and continue your twining just like this. Just, you can give some twists, you know, just you can, the, the tighter you pull on these wraps, the narrower your basket is going to be. And the looser you do this, the more wide it's going to be. So if you kind of wanted a uniform looking basket, you want to try to maintain the same amount of tension on these twining. But if you want something that's kind of narrowing towards the top, like we're going to be doing with this basket, the, the taller we get, the more wraps we add to this, the tighter we're going to pull on these weavers and it's going to narrow our basket. And so that's one little trick there to kind of control the, the shape of our basket. So when you've reached the desired height of your basket, we're going to make sure we have plenty of twine left to finish the rim. So what we're going to do is take the right side and put it over the left side, just like that, right over left. Okay. So now we're going to take that left side and we're going to skip over one spoke and put it in between Back. that spoke and the one next to it. So we skipped over one spoke and just put it in between those two spokes, right? And in between, just uh, like yeah. that. And we're gonna lay that down in there. It doesn't need to be tight because we're gonna wrap it back up over. Okay. Then what we're going to do is take that spoke that we wrapped over and we're gonna give it a few twists. One, two, three. 
You don't actually have to do the twists, but it makes it nicer. Then we're going to tuck that spoke right up over where our weaver went in between those two. And then the reason we didn't cinch down that other weaver is because that weaver is going to lock that spoke in place. We're going to bring that spoke back up and over, or sorry, that weaver back up and over. And you see how I, that weaver didn't didn't quite catch the spoke. So we just got to go and wrap it back around. You can see there it locked into place. Okay, let's do it again. We're going to take the right side So we need to lock that weaver, we need to walk, lock that uh, upright in place. So we put that weaver in between those two spokes. Then we're going to tuck in that upright piece right there and bring back that weaver so it holds it in place just like that. See what happened? Okay. So let's do it again. We're going to make an X. We're going to take that left side and tuck it up and over the spoke adjacent and in between the one after that. Take the one that we wrapped over and give it some twists. Then we're going to tuck that in between those next two spokes, just where that uh, weaver went. Then if we had it done, if we did it correctly, you should be able to bring that weaver back up over and it'll lock that spoke, that upright piece in place. Okay, let's do it again. So make, it, make an X, bring that left side up and over in between. Then pull down that spoke, give it some twists, and tuck it back in between right where that weaver was. Grab the weaver, bring it back up over top of that upright piece to lock it in place. And so it can be kind of confusing at first but once you get it down, it's actually pretty simple. So don't be scared. Just be patient with yourself. Again, let's do it again. Okay. So let's make the X. Bring the right over the left. Take that left side. We're skipping two, going in between that second and third one. And just letting it rest there. Bring down that spoke. Give it some twists. Then we will tuck that in right where that weaver was. And if we had the weaver positioned correctly, we should be able to bring it up and over to just lock that upright piece in place. Then we can uh, pull the upright piece just to make sure it's uh, nice and tight. So we have a nice, tight, uniform looking rim. Let's do it again. X, bring the left up and over that second, in between the second and third spokes. Tuck it down in there. Bring down that first spoke, give it some twists. Tuck that in between that second and third spoke, just like where the weaver went. Snag that weaver, bring it back up and over. Lock that sucker in place. Just like that. All right, we're gonna do it one more time. Make our X. Bring that left side up and over in between the second and third spokes. You can just kind of rest there. Bring down that first spoke. Give it some twists. 
and tuck that spoke in between the second and third spokes. Then we should be able to take that weaver that we had down there before back up and through to lock that upright piece in place. And if it doesn't seem to, if it's not locking it in place, that you just need to switch around the positions of the weaver. Just like bring it up and over or up and under that uh, spoke. Um, that's usually all you need to do. See that gear, I had to reposition that so I can lock it in place. Once we've gotten to our last weaver here, our last upright piece, we've gone around and now there's one more sticking up. What we can do is we're just going to tuck that one back up and through that first weave. And we could do this, uh, depends on how much length you have left on your uprights. We could do this one time, two times, three times. Uh, whatever makes you feel good about it, make sure it's not gonna fall apart on you. And it could be helpful to use uh, like a, a Phillips set screwdriver or a chopstick or some something to help you persuade that piece up and through that weave. Um, we don't wanna just disturb it too much, but we need something, some help. Okay, then we're just gonna go ahead and trim up our basket. We'll trim up all the little bits and pieces that will be on the outside, and then we'll, we'll trim up all those upright pieces that got folded to the inside of the basket. Just like this. We'll trim it all up, and when it's all done, it'll, it'll look pretty nice. There you have it, a finished cattail basket. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications for more episodes of Basketry for Beginners and Beyond.